I've got a champ body here that I got out of the trash can at a friend's house. He was just throwing it away and uh, he said I could have it. It comes in two pieces. It's got a top and a bottom. There's how it goes together and uh, you can either glue it together or just run some tape along the sides. And here's what it looks like in the inside. Now what I'm going to try to do is mount this little bitty brushless motor on the front of it and run it with a one cell power system, one cell LiPo. So what I'm going to do is glue a little piece of tongue depressor in here like that and then I've made this motor mount which I pre-drilled with three holes out of a piece of tongue depressor. It's made out of a tongue depressor. And uh, I've just epoxied a little piece of balsa wood to the back of it. It's placed on a little bit of down angle so the engine will have a little bit of down angle to it. And what I'll do is eventually glue it onto that. Well, you get the idea. Here is the motor mount glued on with a little bit of Elmer's wood glue. Looks just like this. With a stick glued on to the tongue depressor. And when we put the lid on, it looks like this. Now, just for comparison's sake, let's see what an actual champ weighs without the battery on it. It has no battery. And the answer is 37 grams. Okay, now let's see what the Clued Champ is going to look like with the brushless power system. How much that will weigh. All right now we got 28 grams with the power system minus the battery on there but we have no control surfaces so what I'm going to do is throw on a piece of foam here a piece of two millimeter Depron on top trying to balance it there we go got to balance now I don't know if I'm going to use all of that for them but I got uh, 43 grams now so that's 37 grams versus 43 so Weighs a little more, but of course, like I said, I may not use all of that foam. Now we're going to cut the wing out for the champ, and we're going to be using this 2 millimeter foam. It's about 15 inches wide. 15 inches wide isn't enough for the length of the wing, so I'll be going the long way. Now all of this foam usually has a natural bend or bias in one direction. This one's kind of, well, you can see it's kind of bent this way towards the bottom. It has a little bow to it. So what we want to do is flip it up the other way like that because we've got to match this curve on the champ right here. So we want that foam, since it's already bent in that direction one way, we'll just go with the foam orientated so it matches this curve. I've got the champ uh, laid on top of this foam board. I'm just using a pre-made champ as a template to sketch out what my new wing will be like. And the new wing is going to be a little bit wider. I'm going to have like another half inch wider to give me a little more wing surface to carry the extra weight. So now I'm going to go ahead and trace out the basic size of the wing. Okay, I've put the plane on top of the foam and traced out the wing and then added a, about a half inch to the rear end of the wing by just sliding this plane, just sliding the plane back a half inch and then and then finishing my line right back on the back edge of the wing 
and that gives me something that looks like this. I guess you can see it there. Just using the original wing as a template. So I'll put a picture of this at the end of the video when I get done, so with some measurements. I'm going to take this X-Acto blade here and just go ahead and cut this wing out. No rocket science here. I just cut it out with an ordinary X-Acto blade and the two millimeter foam cuts like butter. And this wing will now mount onto the fuselage right here with a little bit of glue. I painted uh, both sides of the wing yellow now with some H2O paint and then I've gone and run a carbon fiber rod through the wing got a little piece of tape on both sides one here and then there's one on the other side so I ran the carbon fiber rod uh, between the two pieces of tape and then folded it up out to the wing tip to provide some dihedral and I just went and taped over the part that was on top of the wing that pulls it down against the wing and gives a dihedral shape to the wing on both sides. And I took both carbon fiber rods and tied some thread around them and put a few dabs of CA glue. And now the dihedral is pretty permanent. Okay, the next stage is to glue the wing down to the top of the plane so the wings are now being glued to the top of the fuselage with some CA glue medium gap filling CA glue and once that dries or while it's drying we can work on doing the tail control surfaces. The main wing is now glued to the body and we have a little bit of dihedral there because of the carbon fiber rods and the shape of the body gives us a little airfoil. I've cut out the sections for the uh, horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. I haven't cut out the line across here for the elevator yet but I'm going to do that and then glue this all onto the plane. The tail section is now mounted on the back of the plane and I have the electronics mounted in the front here. So far we got uh, two linear servos, one right here and one right here, mounted on this little piece of Depron. And the uh, receiver is right here. And the ESC is underneath there, down in the bottom. With this wire running underneath the receiver, over here to the motor. Got a little piece of uh, Velcro right here for the receiver to stick onto, whereas the uh, two linear servos are hot melted onto this piece of Depron. Now I need to run my control rods from these servos down through the body to the underside of the tail section, and under there I've got a little servo horn. I cut off the end of a servo horn and just uh, hot melted it onto the rudder. Did the same thing for the elevator. Took a servo horn and hot melted it right onto it. Poked it through and hot melted it. So now I just need to connect those up and we should have the linkage done and then we can test it out. I used a piece of this 
overhead projector plastic. Just cut off a little strip and then slit the back end of the fuselage right here and CA that little piece of plastic in there to act as a hinge. I think you can see it right there. That gives it a little more support. I've got this one cell battery plugged in now on the bottom of the plane and got it bound to the radio. So let's try out these linear servos. That's going to go to the elevator. And this one's going to go to the rudder. So if I get back here, I'll move the stick and you can see them operate. And of course the throttle operates the motor. Oh, there we go, went forward. Okay, I'm getting ready to make some Z-bands to put on the end of this uh, carbon fiber rod and hold it on with some yellow heat shrink tubing. So to make a Z-band, all I gotta do is make one 90 degree bend like that and then just make another one in the reverse direction and then I got a Z-band you can clean it up to make sure it's exactly 90 if you want and then I'm going to put it on the end of the control rods which are already in the body of the plane right here and they uh, see that one controls the elevator when I push it back and forth and the other one controls the rudder I've already got Z-bends on there. Z-bends are going through my control horns here that are made out of a servo horn. And you can see where I've already got them heat trunk onto the carbon fiber rods. Okay, what I'm going to do now is put this Z-bend into the servo horn here like that bring the control rod up next to it and then slip or slip it over like that now once it's over there I'm going to just go ahead and heat it up with a soldering iron, gently heat it on all sides to shrink it. Making sure that the elevator here is flat when I do it. Okay, so both control rods are now attached to the servo horns. And if they do slide loose, what we can do is put a little bit of CA at the ends here, just a drop at each end, it'll soak in, up inside the tube and uh, fix those permanently. But they seem to be pretty strong. They don't seem to want to move, so it looks good. There's the end on the elevator, goes through here, attaches to the servo there. Pretty simple. Okay, the next phase is to tape the top on. Tape the top on with a little bit of scotch tape along the edges right here. And then we can give it a try and see how it flies and try to figure out the center of gravity. Okay, here goes the test flight. Batteries are sort of running out of juice already. 
got it fully throttled up. Whereas the other one I could throttle down quite a bit. if I can bring it in. The throttle down about halfway. Really throttled down. Only about one third power. Here it comes. And there's the landing.